All right, so this is episode three of the Java Discord bot tutorial series. And in this episode, we're going to be going over commands. Now, for our commands, we're going to be using slash commands as we've moved away from the olden days where we have a command prefix, a command prefix, the command, and then the arguments. That's olden days. Now we have lovely new inbuilt into Discord slash commands that we can use for our bot. Now, there are two types of slash command. There are, there are global commands and there are guild. Now, global commands can be used anywhere. So, this and this means um, where? Uh, this means that um, they can. Uh, this means that they can be used in DMs, uh, any anywhere the bot is. So DMs, guilds, anything like that. Um, guild commands can only be used in certain guilds. In certain guilds. So this means that we register it to um, to one guild, and it only works in that one guild. It doesn't work in anywhere else. So we can so we can use it as like a private command or something like that. Um, now, the those aren't just the main differences. Another thing is global commands take a very long time to register. So global commands may take up to an hour sometimes to register. But the guild commands, they are updated and registered instantly. But so this means that for testing, obviously we're going to use guild commands. But eventually, you once you've finished development, you will switch to global. Obviously, if you're trying to use global to test something, you make one small update to the command and you have to wait a very long time to actually test it. So we use guild and then once we've finished making our commands, we can use global. So... To actually make these commands, we first are going to need, I'm going to make a new package called commands. Again, you can, as always, you can redo the um, hierarchy of your project. But in this, in this package, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a class for each command. So a command I'm going to do here is, let's say, um, a, a sum. So this is going to take the sum of two numbers and put them together. So let's make this extend the listener adapter, just like we do for event classes. And this is going to override a method, method called uh, on slash command interaction. We're going to get rid of that super. And what we're going to do is we can actually, so we first need to test that it's actually the right command, because this is going to run for all slash command interactions, I believe, the slash commands of the bot, obviously not slash commands of say another bot like MeSeeks. So we can do if event dot get name dot equals and then put in the name so sum and remember these names have to be one word uh, and no capital letters. Uh, so we can do that. And I'm going to do if not this then just return because we don't want to be running anything, don't be processing anything. If it's not so now what we can do is just to test this we can do event dot reply uh, with um, with I don't know or let's just say hi or let's just do test the world you know whatever just to test and Q now because this is this is something called an interaction we actually have to reply to the interaction so slash commands you don't just send messages you have to actually reply to it otherwise it can cause otherwise it causes problems if there is no reply then it sort of messes things up uh, i'll show you how it messes things up later but for now let's just do this basic uh, thing so we're going to reply to it with the with a message now we're actually going to register this and this has to be registered i'm going to do it for the guild and this has to be registered on startup so we can go into our listeners package in listeners class sorry and I'm actually gonna get rid of this event so we can go into here and we don't need this we can do event dot get jda dot get guild by ID and we actually need to copy the ID of our guild and to do this we're first going to want to activate a setting it's called developer mode so you're going to want to go to your user settings and go down to app settings advanced and there's a little one called developer mode so you can want to make sure this you want to turn this on make sure it's turned on you can just hit escape 
and then what we can do is it means we can now copy IDs of things. So let's say I right click on the on the tutorial bot, we can see we can copy the ID or say my user can copy ID, we can copy message IDs and we can copy guild IDs, which is what we need it for this time, but you're going to be, be using it for, met, for, for a lot of things throughout Discord bot development. So users and stuff like that and channels and messages. So we're going to right click on our, on our guild and we're going to copy the ID. And so now what we can do is we can come back into our get guild by ID and you can either paste it as a string or you can paste it as a long. I'm going to be pasting it as a, as a long. Um, so, and so that is going to get us our guild and I'm just going to make a variable of that guild. And so I'm just going to be registering my slash command onto this guild. And then obviously at the end, once I've finished developing it, we can turn it into a globe. So to do this, we're going to do guild.upsert command. And this is going to take in a string name. So I'm just going to call it, uh, what, did we, what did we call it? We called it sum. So I'm going to call it sum. And we can give it a description. Uh, gives, gives a sum of two numbers. So, and then this needs to be queued, I believe. So, then what we can do is we can, so it says it won't produce an output exception. Uh, this should be fine. So, what we should be able to do now is we should be able to, if we add this as an event listener, so if we add the sum one as an event listener, uh, we can take in a new sum, and that. There, so now hopefully this should all work. So if I run this, we should see that the bot comes online and I should be able to do slash sum. And it didn't work. Now the reason this didn't work is because we haven't granted our bot the correct scopes. Now a scope is if we go to, well, we need to do this when we actually authorize the bot. So we go to auth2 and URL generator like we did to actually generate access to the bot like when we first made it. We gave it the scope bot, but it also needs the scope applications.commands. This allows it to create slash commands. And then you can give it all your permissions and we're going to have to reauthorize this. So we're going to have to come here and kick the bot from the server. And then we are going to go back to here. We're going to copy and then we can paste it into here and so now we can authorize it onto the server and now when we start it back up we should hopefully not get any errors and we should be allowed to use the slash command so if i do that it should load on log on there we go we can do slash sum and there we go I have to give the sum of two numbers so i can click it and there it sends hello world now Obviously, at the moment, this isn't taking anything in. So, what we need to do is we need to actually add a um, argument to this command. So, to do this, when we actually add the command, we are going to also do dot add option. After we've done the object command, we're going to do dot add option, and so this can either be options or option. Uh, I'm going to do option. Uh, but this take can take in. It can take in a new. No, sorry, we do want to. We do want to do options because this lets us take in option data. So it's taking in a new option data, and so to actually create this option data, we can have a look at the constructor, and it takes in an option type, and then we can have a look here what it actually takes in. So the type the name, the description, and it can also take in if it is required. So, so I think I'm going to do the type, so option type dot, and so we want an integer, uh, then we want a string name, so we're going to have a number num1, I'm going to, no, I'm going to call it number, number one, and I believe you can't have spaces here, I might be wrong, you can try out. And then in the description, I'm just going to have 
first number. So, and then the boolean is whether it's required. So I'm going to set it as true. So this, you can't run the command without putting this in, in this option. So to access this uh, argument, we need to do event dot get option, and then we need to get the name, get passing the name of it. It's going to be number one, and then we can do we can just get it as a um, variable. So I'm going to do number one, and then what we can do is we actually have to um, get this as an integer. So we can do number one dot get as int, and I'm going to do that as a bar and there's num1 and that should work and then so what we've done there is we've actually taken in the number and so now I'm going to I'm going to you can only reply to an event once to the interaction once so I'm going to remove this and then I'm down here I'm going to reply with number one but now uh, I'm going to do that as a string so I can do it like that and of course this needs to be queued so now what should happen is hopefully uh, this should be able to should be able to do the slash command and take in an argument so if we do slash sum it's going to take in a number if you try to send it this option is required it doesn't like it so i'm going to put in if i say i put a string and put a valid integer let's put in two and it gets it as two now what we need to so now what we need to do is we can also set it so that it has a maximum and minimum. So in the listener, we can do when we have option data, we can do dot set min value, and it's going to take in a minimum value. So I'm going to set mine as one. I'm going to set a max value. So let's say I wanted mine to be 100, for example. We can rerun this, and then we could do slash sum. And if I try to do negative one, input a value, integer value from one to 100, 101, it's not going to like it, zero, don't like that either, one, there we go. And so now what we need to do is obviously we need to add multiple arguments. So I'm going to quickly do this just so we can see easily what's going on. Uh, and then, yeah, so there. And so now we can add a second argument. So I'm just going to create a new option data, option type integer. And there's loads of different types you can take. You can take a channel, you can take a, a boolean, you can take a, like a, a person, you can take any number, you can take a role, you can take all of this stuff and it will work. And Discord just automatically sorts it out for you and pass it for you, which is really handy. Uh, so we don't have to manage it manually anymore like we would back when we were just using messages as commands. So I'm going to create a new one, which is an integer. This is going to be number two. And this is the second number. This is the second number. And then is required. This can be true as well. Actually, I'm going to make this false just to show that it will work without it. So then I'm going to set a minimum value of, again, I'm going to do it one and set max value of 100 and then we can just uh we need to ah we've done this wrong hang on i formatted my code incorrectly we need to add another bracket there so i'm just going to put it there and then we need a comma of course and then we can just hang on. this is very wrong we need to dot q and we also need to close that we need to stop. No, we don't. Hold up. Once we've done all of this, add options here. There we go. Right. Sorry. And we can queue that. There. Right. Now that's fixed. We can. Um, so we've got all of this. We've had our second uh, num one. And what we can do is we can do here. We can get another one, so we can do event dot get option uh, number two, and then we can just uh, oh, we can number two even. We can just get this as a variable number two, and then if number two, because we've set it so it isn't required, if it is null, then we can. I'm going to make an integer here in num two, 
as let's just make it as one. So if it is if or if it is null, then we can just make num two. If it is sorry, if it isn't null, to be a better way of doing it, under the fly, then we can just do number two equals number num number two. Yeah, add int. So, sorry, we, what we're doing here is we're essentially we're getting the we're getting the option. Uh, sort of like called JDA, obviously. Um, I'm putting it in here, and then we're just going to do if it if there is if it is, then we're storing it in here. If not, we're just setting it as one. So this way, we can show that now that we have an is required false, we can just have it default to something. So I'm going to do I'm going to make it reply with num one plus num two. But I'm going to do I'm going to make an int to here int result is num one plus num two. And then this we can just put here. We can put result. I'm going to do to string. Turn it into string, and that should hopefully work. So if I rerun, then what should happen is we can do slash sum. And if let's say I put in two, and I added, and I also did three, then that's going to do. Oh well, that didn't take in the second one. Um, for some reason, so I can do slash sum num one two tab num two, and then we can do three. I'm going to take in five, but that just showed because we didn't put in on this one. We just do sum uh, two. It's just going to do three because it's defaulting. So it is not required, but you can put it in. So that is how you create slash commands and also how you add arguments to them. Um, so finally I just want to show you to actually add this to um, as a global rather than doing guild upset command you do uh, you do event.getjda so you add it to the JDA rather than the guild and that's going to add it globally but as I said it takes longer to actually add it. So that's where I'm going to leave it this time. Obviously this isn't the greatest way to lay out the code. Next time, we'll probably be going over some sort of event manager, not event manager, um, command manager. Uh, so hopefully, I'll catch you then.